Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. I was holding the contract for the house with trembling hands, knowing that this was the point of no return. I would give away almost all of my savings, and I wouldn't be able to buy anything else. But what else could I buy with such pennies? It was the only offer I could find. I looked at my son sitting next to me and resolutely signed the paperwork. I have to do this for the sake of my son. Even though the future is frightening, it is the only right choice. The man who had sold me the abandoned house in the remote village chuckled and rubbed his hands happily. I could tell by his appearance that he wasn't going to use the money for his family or his cozy home, he was going to buy some booze. Alberto said he worked as an automobile mechanic and lived near the factory. And he simply didn't need the house he inherited from his mother. The notary carefully checked the documents and assured me the deal would be safe. But anyway, I had no other option. I handed over the money and got the keys to the house. Although, the keys were more like a symbol because the lock had long been broken and the seller opened the door for me with his foot. I was not happy with the house, but it was possible to live there. The most important thing was that I could hide from my husband, who gave me no peace with his threats. He would never let me or my son live a normal life. In my mind, I returned to the day when I realized that I can no longer live with this man. A few days ago, Diego came home drunk, although he usually didn't drink. Well, we had some arguments and misunderstandings sometimes. Sometimes my husband even hit me, and he considered it to be something normal. Usually, he didn't hit me too badly, but even the occasional slaps to my face left deep scars on my soul. I always tried to find excuses for his actions and always tried to reduce the conflict. Even though I realized that we had no future, I never planned to become a punching bag. And I knew that if Diego hit me once, he would definitely hit me again. Showing up at home completely drunk, with a strong smell of female perfume, Diego began to yell that my son and I pissed him off. He started accusing me that he wasn't the father of our child and that our son didn't look like him or any of his relatives. I knew it was his mother who convinced him that I had cheated on him, but I didn't have the strength to confront her and prove anything to her. Esteban's illness drained the rest of my strength. My son got sick, often fainted in kindergarten, and was very weak. We went for a full checkup, but no doctor could make any diagnosis. The doctors shook their hands and said that, in general, all indicators were normal. During the fight, Diego said that Esteban got sick because I got pregnant by some drug-addicted lover and the boy was bound to die soon. This was the last straw because my son could hear everything and at the age of four, he understood everything perfectly well. After packing, I ran away while my husband was in the bathroom. My friend sheltered us for a few days, but we had to move on. I explained the situation to my boss and he let me work remotely for the next six months. And God only knows what would happen next. Esteban and I walked outside. The wind was fluttering the strands of my red hair and blowing it in my face. I knew I didn't look good right now, but I didn't have time to work on myself. The main thing was that my son would be okay and I'll take care of everything else later. But even such difficulties didn't take away my positive attitude toward life. While I lived with my husband, I learned to see something good even in situations where nothing good could happen. But if you don't have a positive attitude toward life, you can quickly fade away. There are too many problems in life, and we should not make it worse with pessimism. Esteban, dear, how are you feeling? Are you all right? I decide to ask because I plan to go to the store and buy detergent and rat repellent. There are probably rats in that house. And it would be good to buy some groceries because I didn't even know if there was a store in that village. Most of the houses were uninhabited and almost all the neighbors were elderly. I needed to talk to them and find out how they live and where they buy food because we could not afford to take a cab every week. And we also needed to buy a new lock. Even though the village is small and seems safe, it's better to lock up the house. I'm okay, Esteban smiled. Mom, are we going to walk outside? I like our new yard. Of course, we will, son, I nodded. We'll clean the house and make it the coziest place in the world. 
When we came to see the house, Esteban got scared and whispered that we got into El Chuchui's lair. And he was right, the devastation outside was no better than everything that was going on inside. But we'll cope, we have to cope with it. I wanted to get a loan, but I was afraid I wouldn't have enough money to pay it back and the bank would take the house. So we were faced with the difficult task of making the house cozy without a penny. I didn't have much money left, but I could afford to buy the cheapest pillows, blankets, and dishes. It wouldn't be a bad idea to get my stuff from my ex-husband's house, but I was afraid to show up there. Diego was mad. He was trying to stop me by force, but I couldn't live in hell anymore. My son couldn't be there anymore either. So we knew that we would overcome any difficulties together. I looked at my phone screen and saw many threatening messages from my husband. And I realized that I had made the right choice. I was destined to buy this house, so everything would be fine. Most importantly, my son and I will be safe. We took a cab to our new house, and the driver grumbled that he didn't want to go to the middle of nowhere. If not for his boss, he would have refused to drive to that remote village. I was a non-conflictive person, and I didn't want to get out of the car, so I decided to silently listen to the driver's complaints. The man did not give me the change, saying that he did not have any, and he didn't even help me take the bags out. I wonder why there are so many such terrible men in my life. This vicious circle began with my father and continued with my husband. My father always blamed my mother and me that he had to work and provide for us. And this was even though my mother was the one who brought money into the family, she worked very hard and provided for my father and me. Unfortunately, she died early and never had time to enjoy a normal life. And my father is enjoying his life even now and doesn't even think about his daughter and grandson. I sighed heavily and wiped away the tears from my eyes. I need to stay strong for my son to raise him as a decent man. At that moment, I looked at my son and thought that not all the men in my life were bad. After all, my boss seemed to understand my situation and let me edit texts at home instead of in the office that's worth a lot. He understood me, even though he lowered my salary slightly. However, I will work as hard as possible so I can earn good bonuses anyway. Now it's spring and before winter comes, my son and I will have to do some repairs, replace the ruined furnace and install good windows. Did I ever think I would have to go through this? No, I was sure that I married a wonderful man. But I didn't get along with his mother, and then the nightmare began. And I don't blame only my mother-in-law, Diego let her lead him on a leash like he was a dog. If he really loved me, me and our son, nothing could ruin our family, not even his mother. I made the biggest mistake of my life when I married him. But still, I got something good out of our relationship, my son Esteban. Even though it was too soon, even though I wasn't ready for a child when I found out about the pregnancy, I am grateful to the Almighty for my son. And I will do everything to help my boy get better. I don't know what this disease is that no one can identify, but we'll handle it, too. The fresh air is the only advantage of our humble home, and it will be good for my boy. I'm sure everything will be fine. Mom, are you sure El Chuchui is fiction? What if he shows up at night? My son asked as we entered the house with the heavy bags. I smiled. He was so sincere and so trusting that he even believed in the existence of El Chuchui. I was the same when I was a kid. When I went to bed, I always buried myself in my blanket so El Chuchui wouldn't see me. No, darling, El Chuchui only exists in legends. You don't have to be afraid. He won't come to us, I said seriously, knowing that I shouldn't make fun of children's fears. And if he comes, I will defend myself. And I'll save you too. Tears came to my eyes from tenderness. I have a little defender and I am sure that I am on the right track, protecting my son from the influence of such a cruel father. I cleaned the house until late at night, while my son played with the stuffed bunny and the car, the only things we quickly put in the suitcase before we left. It was cold in the house, and I was glad I had time to pack some warm clothes. My son was sitting in a warm sweater and pants while I was getting a little warmer while cleaning the house, so I was wearing a robe. However, I knew I'd have to wear warm pajamas at night because the blanket wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. But it was the cheapest blanket, so I didn't complain. The light bulb was dim and flickering, 
but at least the house had electricity, and that was good. The refrigerator was outdated, but it worked. There was even some old furniture left in the house. It looked terrible. This furniture should have been taken to the dump a long time ago, but in this situation, I was grateful for this furniture. I put mousetraps in the corners to see if mice and rats come to visit this house. We should probably get a cat, but I'll think about that later. My son and I had a simple dinner, a couple of sandwiches. He drank hot milk and I had coffee to warm up a bit, and then we got under the blanket and relaxed. I've only cleaned one couch so far, so we had to sleep together on this couch. Esteban fell asleep quickly, and I looked at him and let myself be a little fragile. I cried silently because of the hopelessness I felt. I should have listened to my mother years ago when she warned me that my life wouldn't be happy with Diego. I loved him madly and didn't notice his shortcomings, and now I suffer the punishment for my feelings and my stupidity, and not alone, Esteban certainly didn't deserve it. It's good that my son doesn't demand anything and understands that the situation is really difficult. My son understands that I am doing everything I can. He even wants to protect me. I smiled, wiped away my tears, and fell asleep, thinking that I would be strong. I have to be strong. In the morning, my friend, Silvana, arrived. She brought some presents, toys for Esteban, and a warm blanket because I told her it was freezing in the house. I also brought a heater. I wonder if the wiring here is normal. At first, I was happy to have a heater, but then I realized that the wiring here is very old and it's just not safe to turn on another electric item. Wires were hanging from the ceiling I knew it was necessary to call a good electrician, but no one would be willing to go into the middle of nowhere. And even if someone agreed, it wouldn't be cheap. Well, all in all, it's not so bad, Silvana sighed. Anyway, how are you doing, Irma? My friend hugged me, and I shrugged. I knew that she understands my situation, and there was no point in lying that everything was fine. Mentally, it was very hard for me at the moment, but I hoped that soon this unpleasant feeling would go away. And everything will be really, really good. You did the right thing running away from that asshole. Francisco and I will help you in any way we can, and we won't leave you and Esteban alone. When Francisco has a vacation, we'll help with repairs. Thank you, Silvana. I smiled in response to my friend's words, which struck me to the core. I am so happy to have someone in my life that I can rely on. Silvana and I grew up in the same neighborhood and have been friends since kindergarten. We became like sisters. They say there is no such thing as friendship between women, but between us, there is more than that. We are family, not a blood family, but real and strong. Esteban was happily looking at the toys that his godmother had brought, and I was looking at the yard. There is a lot of work to do, but maybe we can even make a small vegetable garden here. The most important thing is to fulfill the work assignments because my salary is our only income now. Silvana promised to come once a week and take me to the office so that I could hand in the work I had done and get a new project. I am incredibly grateful to her for that. Maybe someday I will have the opportunity to thank my friend and help her in some way, too. I wish that could happen. The harshness of everyday life began. Diego called less and less often, realizing that I was gone for good. Once I even answered his call, hoping that it would be possible to sort things out peacefully. But he kept accusing me of constantly cheating on him, telling me that he wasn't the father of our son and that we would die without him. And he was telling it to his wife, whom he was still thinking about. It was disgusting. I didn't have much time for sleep because during the day I was busy doing chores around the yard and house. And at night, when my son fell asleep, I did my work assignments. Anyway, I got used to the schedule I knew that I had to survive for the sake of my son. Even when I thought I had no strength at all, I would look at my boy and the energy would fill me up again. Our neighbors turned out to be good people. The old lady Jacaranda often brought us milk and cottage cheese free of charge. And I gave her pastries and chocolates in return. All the people in the village were kind and sincere. But unfortunately, there were no children at all in the village and Esteban had no friends. 
But I don't give up hope that this is a temporary circumstance and that one day my son and I will be able to move to the city. Right now I need to earn some money. I had some savings and I could rent a small apartment or a room in the city, but I was afraid that the savings would run out quickly and we would have to starve. Besides, fresh air is good for Esteban. My son's cheeks turned pink and he stopped fainting. Perhaps the endless stress worsened Esteban's health. After all, his father was constantly yelling and hitting me, and our son witnessed it all. Now we are free, and even though the living conditions became worse, there was a feeling of security and confidence in the future. Summer came quickly. I was tidying up the yard, and some flowers were already blooming along the crooked fence. My son and I planted a small vegetable garden, and Esteban helped me take care of it. I got used to the new way of life and finally felt free. Diego keeps calling and trying to bring us back. Now he pretends to be a victim. He tells me how miserable he feels without us and blames me for taking his son away. And when I tell him I don't believe him anymore and I won't go back, the bully is back, yelling that I won't get a penny of child support. It seems to me that Diego is just afraid that I will file for divorce and try to get child support and half of the apartment. But I don't want anything from him, and I told him about it, but he doesn't believe me. It's all because of his mother, she always thought I was a greedy liar. But I don't understand why she treats me this way, I never hurt her, in fact, I tried to be friends with her and treated her like my mom. But it didn't work out. For some reason, my mother-in-law considered me the number one enemy and hated everything about me. Before I got married, I didn't believe that was possible. I naively believed that if I tried to be friends with her and treat her well, she would consider me part of the family. Apparently, I was wrong. I did something wrong. Or maybe I was just too young and tried to see only good in people, not understanding who they really are. I brought you so much stuff. Silvana said, gasping for air. She and her husband brought us a few boxes and a lot of bags, and I was ready to burst into tears, even though I didn't know what was in the boxes. Silvana, you didn't have to. You must have spent a lot of money. Stop saying no. You haven't seen the most important thing. We recently finished repairs at Francisco's parents' summer house, and there's so much left over, paint, and even wallpaper. So, we'll turn this Chuchuis den into a beautiful and comfortable dream house. Silvana said, looking at Esteban and winking at him. It's not much free time, but we'll help you, so don't worry. By the way, Francisco made a deal with a man at work, with a stove maker. So they will make you a new stove for a modest price. My friend and I hugged each other, and I whispered that I wouldn't survive without her support. Silvana and Francisco were in a hurry, so they didn't even stay for coffee and snacks, even though they brought a cake and something else. Esteban asked us to go outside. We sat down in the gazebo, opened the paints, and I smiled, remembering how much I loved to paint as a child. I dreamed of becoming a designer, but I couldn't go to college because there were no scholarships and tuition was too expensive. I drew a lot at home in my spare time and even decorated the nursery myself. The walls there were so bright and beautiful. But Diego never liked them, and he never missed an opportunity to mock me, pointing out that I was doing total nonsense. My husband never liked my drawings, he doesn't like anything related to creativity, because he could never do anything like that himself. Maybe it was childhood trauma. Diego told me that his mother forced him to go to an art school, and to music school, even though he didn't like it. Mom, can I paint with these paints? My son asked, pointing to the jars and brushes. It depends on where and what you want to paint, I smiled back, thinking that we could paint something in the house or the yard. We could paint the fence, but first, we need to fix it up and replace some sections that have sagged. Then let's paint on the wall of the house to make it look like my room. Everyone will love it, they'll all be admiring it. Esteban shouted excitedly. By everyone he means the villagers. After all, there is no one else here except the villagers, there are hardly any guests, and even the cars avoid this village. Only Silvana comes here quite often, but the locals have already made friends with her. I'm thinking, looking at the walls of a shabby house. 
it's not a bad idea if we could add some life to this almost dead place. I nodded and smiled again. Suddenly, I felt life boil up inside of me. It was like I came back to life. Why not? Go ahead. Get any brush that you like. But I can't draw, my son said sadly. I thought you'd draw it yourself. I'll help you, and we'll have a common, beautiful picture. I also didn't know how to draw before, but I learned it. And you will learn. I know that you have a talent. Esteban perked up. We painted until late at night, and when we were tired, we went inside, ate cake, and fell asleep. It felt like a breath of fresh air doing what I loved. Tomorrow we will finish the painting, and this place will play with new colors. Esteban woke me up early in the morning. My son pointed his finger excitedly outside and called me to hurry up and finish our masterpiece. I perked up and mentally scolded myself for being distracted from my work project, but I promised myself I would finish it tonight. After breakfast, we went outside, continued to work on the painting, and finished it before lunch. The bright, juicy colors lift our spirits. Neighbors passing by looked at our house with smiles. I felt alive for the first time in a while. While Silvana was busy, and they were discussing all the details with the stove maker, I had time to decorate the room and put wallpaper on the walls. There were different rolls of wallpaper. We didn't have enough wallpaper with the same pattern, but it was even better with different ones. The patterns are not very different and look as if it was the original design. My son and I went outside for a walk, and I flinched when a big black SUV stopped in front of our house. My heart raced in my chest. I called my son to me and looked frightened at the car. What a person in such a car is doing in this village? What if Diego found us? My heart clenched with horror, and my hand reached into my pocket for my phone to call the police or text my friend in case of danger. At least someone would know exactly what had happened to us. A young man in a suit got out of the SUV and looked at our house, then turned his attention to me. Hello, may I ask who is the owner of this beauty? The man asked. I'm still frightened. My tongue feels numb and I can't move it. I just stare at the man and clap my eyes. But I don't move and stand there like a monument. Well, at least it's not Diego's friend. This is our home. Esteban said. I see. I don't want your house. I only wonder who drew such a beauty. The man pointed to the drawing. Perhaps I shouldn't have made the house so bright and eye-catching. I still can't come to my senses, but I answer that it's my son and I. You are very talented, the man said. It's so beautiful. It's like you filled this place with life. The last time I was here, it looked somewhat different. He lowered his head sadly as if remembering something bad. Something that struck him in the heart. I don't feel like continuing this conversation because I don't know who this man is and I don't want to get to know him. But who knows what's going on in his head? Usually, criminals or millionaires drive such expensive cars and they don't care about the problems of ordinary people. Thank you, I nodded. My name is Lucas, the man introduced himself. How long have you lived here? I didn't answer the question, frowning and shielding my son, because the man was bold enough to open the gate and come in. Excuse me, but I didn't invite you and I dared to say. Sorry, it's just a habit. When I came to visit my grandmother, there was no need to ask permission. The man raised his hands as if surrendering, stepped back, and closed the gate. I felt my cheeks burn with embarrassment and, at the same time, rage. Came to see his grandmother? Does he mean this house belongs to him? I frowned silently, biting my lips and cringing. We bought this house, I said, lifting my chin a little. Last spring. I've been out of the city for a long time, the man nods. Maybe you could let me in so I wouldn't have to shout over the fence. I refused because this man scared me. And I didn't want to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him. I'm glad this place revived, at least a little. I rarely come here. I came to clean up my grandmother's grave. I had no idea that Alberto sold this house, but I'm glad to see it's in good hands. Have a good day. Thank you. Goodbye. 
The man got in his car and left, and I hugged my son with relief. I was so scared that my ex-husband found us that this stranger would hurt us. Mom, why didn't you let this mister in? Esteban asked. He probably wanted to take a closer look at our drawing. No, dear, we shouldn't let strangers look at our drawing. Let him admire it from the outside. I shook my head. Let's go home. There are probably some interesting cartoons on TV. Silvana brought us the TV. It was a very old model, but it worked great. Francisco helped us install the TV antenna. They also gave us a DVD player and CDs with cartoons and movies. But Esteban had already watched all of them, so there was no way to lure him home. Mom, can I walk around some more? My son asked. I nodded. My hands were still trembling, but I calmed down a little bit. I let my son play in the yard because the stranger who introduced himself as Lucas has already left. I went to work in the vegetable garden and Esteban played on the porch. I didn't ask him to help today because he's already done too much. At the age of four, he's acting like a real man. He wasn't even scared of Lucas and talked to him bravely. I looked at my son and smiled. But suddenly I was scared to death that SUV drove up to our house again. I'm sorry, but I couldn't help but stop. I was driving by and... Lucas says, getting out of the car. Lucas, tell me frankly, do you think we violated your rights by buying the house from your uncle? I asked stepping closer to the fence. Everything seemed to be fine with the paperwork, but everything is always too complicated when it comes to these inheritance cases. No, that's not what I wanted to talk about. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I actually noticed your drawing, it's amazing. The drawing is done very professionally. Are you an artist? I negatively shook my head. Maybe a designer? I say no again. I'm an editor. I edit books for the publishing house. For some reason, I decided to be frank. Seriously? It's also a creative job, but you definitely have a talent as a designer. Take my business card, please. The man took a business card out of his pocket and gave it to me. I will be in the nearby city for a few days. I offer you a job in the capital and a big advertising agency. Maybe you will be interested in it. I took his business card but decided right away that I wasn't going to call him. How could I leave everything and go to the capital? My son's health finally began to improve and the fresh air helped him recover. And what will I do in the capital? No, that's out of the question. As long as we have the opportunity, we have to live in the countryside, and then we'll see. Besides, I have no one in the capital, and I simply can't trust the stranger. After all, I am responsible for my child, and I have to think about his safety. I should not be reckless and take such important decisions spontaneously. Besides, this offer seems too attractive and too profitable. What if Lucas is lying to me and will force me to work in some whorehouse? I've heard a lot of creepy stories about young women who moved to the capital and were forced to work in whorehouses. No, I won't even think about his offer. Lucas left, and I put his business card in my pocket, thinking that I should throw it away. The next day, Silvana came to visit. She suggested celebrating her birthday at our place, and I liked the idea. It would be nice to have a barbecue and relax a little. I agreed and my friend took pictures of the house like it was a work of art. I thought about yesterday's guest and told Silvana, and she shrugged her shoulders skeptically. Well, I wouldn't immediately trust him, but you should call him and talk to him. Maybe he'll let you work from home. It's not a bad option. After all, you always wanted to be a designer. Yes, I dreamed about it, but I never got into college. Who would hire me without a degree, especially in the capital? No, Lucas' offer seems too suspicious. I can't trust someone I don't know. I have no idea what he's got in mind. What if he is a maniac? I don't know, Silvana. It's too good to be true. He arrived, said he knew the previous owners of the house, and immediately offered me a job. Even though he didn't even know me. That's strange. I am not going to call him and ask for a job because it is not even clear what kind of company he has. He's weird, you know? 
Well, I don't know. Unfortunately, you're often wrong about people. Diego always seemed amazing to you, but he turned out to be a real piece of shit. And I warned you that he is not a saint, as you thought. Well, at least think about it. You have enough time. Maybe you shouldn't think like that about Lucas. Maybe he could really see your talent. Irma, this is a masterpiece. I'd definitely offer you a job if I were the head of some design agency. I thought about Silvana's words. Maybe she's right, but I'm scared to call Lucas. Yes, I'd always wanted to be a designer, but I couldn't have been so lucky. There are hundreds of talented people like me in the capital. I don't even have a professional education, and I don't have a good computer. So I just have to get all these strange, shady dreams out of my head. A few days go by, and soon I got scared again when the SUV stopped by the fence and Lucas got out of it with a bouquet of flowers and a big teddy bear. Why did he bring gifts? The man's behavior makes me nervous. I looked at him through the kitchen window and decided to go outside and talk to him. Have you decided to stalk us? I asked. Please don't think anything bad. I don't even know your name. I'm sorry. Irma, I said quietly and stepped closer. Irma, you didn't call, so I decided to ask you again. Perhaps you thought you would have to move to the capital for work. But that won't be necessary. You can work remotely and send sketches, and then the finished work, via the internet. What do you think about it? After all, you can just try, and if you don't like it, you can say no. Why do you need this? Why do you offer a job to a stranger so insistently? Are there not enough professionals in the capital? I grimaced. Believe me, there are many professionals everywhere, but only a few true talents. The man lowered his head and then gasped. I almost forgot I brought flowers for you and a toy for your son. He handed me a bouquet over the fence. You can come in and give the toy to Esteban yourself. Thank you, but you didn't have to worry about it. Lucas walked up to Esteban who was sitting on the porch and gave him a teddy bear. My son was overjoyed because the teddy bear was even bigger than he was. He's never had such big toys before. I offered Lucas coffee and we all went inside together. I probably shouldn't have invited a stranger inside, but for some reason I didn't feel any danger. I don't think a man in such an expensive car wants to steal something from us. It is obvious that we are not rich. Suddenly, I thought he could be a maniac, and I scolded myself again for being so stupid. I had to be careful because I had a little son. Lucas told me that he is the owner of a big advertising agency and showed me his photos and artwork. Do you see now why I was able to see your talent? As an owner, I appreciate truly talented people, not machines that do tasks, but don't put their soul into them. Lucas looked at the stove and shook his head. Tomorrow, I'll send people to your place to replace the stove. I promised to replace this stove when my grandmother was alive, but I didn't make it. You don't have to do that. I tried to refuse, feeling uncomfortable with such an offer. After all, Silvana also promised to help me with that. She has already made arrangements. Why bother a stranger? Lucas, my friend has already arranged it, so the workers will come as soon as they have free time. Please, Irma, don't refuse. Let me do this, for my grandmother's sake, in her memory. You bought the house that once belonged to her. I want to keep my promise, even after her death. For some reason, the man's words got deep into my soul, and I couldn't resist. So I agreed, even though I continued to scold myself mentally. Maybe I agreed too quickly. I just don't want to regret my decisions later. But suddenly I remembered the naive girl I used to be, who saw only good in people. Probably life experience has knocked the optimistic spirit out of me. Lucas left, and my son and I were alone. Esteban said that Lucas is a nice guy. Better than daddy, and it hurt me. It's awful that my son has a father as bad as the one I had. I wish I could change things, but I don't think I would ever trust someone again. The next day, a team of workers arrived and installed our new stove before the end of the day. I called Lucas to thank him and agreed to try to work for his company. What if this is my chance? 
A few days later, the man brought us a computer desk and a powerful computer with a big monitor. I didn't know what to say the words seemed to dissolve on the tip of my tongue. I looked at all of this and was afraid that soon I would open my eyes and realize that it was just all a dream. Lucas, you didn't have to. It costs a lot of money. What if it doesn't work out? What if I fail? Well, if it doesn't work out, it'll be my little compensation for scaring you and causing you some inconvenience. But I'm sure it will work out. It would be good to stay in touch with you all the time, but I can't connect high-speed internet to your house. Let's try to work under these conditions for now, and then we'll decide what to do. I nodded and thanked him. I couldn't wait to start working and try something new. I had never drawn on a computer before and was not familiar with graphic software, but as soon as I took a graphics tablet, I immediately understood how it worked, quickly learned the essentials, and started working. I suggest that you do a short assignment. How would you illustrate a chocolate advertising banner? Make a quick sketch of it. Ideas immediately pop into my head, interrupting one another. And I draw a happy girl with chocolate in her hands, dreamy ginger sunshine. At this point, I realize that years ago I was just like her, and now I've even stopped taking care of myself. I realize that I am in front of a handsome man. But then I come to my senses. He's my boss. He's not interested in me as a woman. All he wants is good work results. That's wonderful. Put your shyness aside. It's stopping you from developing your talent. Lucas said with a smile. Everything will be all right. I'm leaving for the capital tonight. We'll be in touch, Irma. I'm sure that we will have a long-term and productive collaboration. I wanted to jump with joy, but I tried to control myself. It's too early to be happy. What if it doesn't work out? But I was jumping with joy two weeks later when I got the first paycheck for the work I had done. By doing something I loved and enjoyed, I managed to earn a two-month editor's salary in only two weeks. I really wanted to celebrate, but I didn't have time I had to work. I hadn't quit my job as an editor yet because I didn't know if I would be lucky enough to get the new job. I didn't believe my luck, and I felt like Lucas was about to fire me. I just never had any luck. I didn't know what real luck was. But the time is running quickly, and I realized that I wasn't spending enough time with my son. Next fall, I had to give up my job at the publishing house. There were more and more projects at the advertising agency, and I simply did not have time to do all the work, and I also needed to spend time with my son. I started getting him ready for school, teaching him to read, draw, and trying to discover his talents. Diego did not call, as if he just disappeared from our lives. He did not demand that I come back to him or that I show up in court to get a divorce. I didn't know whether I should be happy or afraid of Diego's next move. But now I just decided not to think about him for a while and to get on with my life, my life without Diego. So far, everything is working out just the way it should. Maybe we can save some money and move closer to the city so that Esteban can find friends and get ready for school. Silvana and Francisco come over all the time and help us with repairs in the living room and kitchen. Life is becoming exactly what I dreamed it would be. Lucas and I often talk on the phone, discussing various projects. Sometimes, I even help him with the general idea of the advertising campaign. It is easy and comfortable for me to communicate with this man. Sometimes, our conversations remind me of a warm, friendly relationship, but I realize that I should not cross the line. After all, he is my employer, not an old friend who cares about my problems. Eventually, in late fall, Diego shows up. My ex-husband demands the divorce because he decided to get married again. And don't even try to ask me for money to support your son. I will request a DNA test. You will have to prove paternity. My ex threatened. We don't need a DNA test. I don't want anything from you. And I'm not going to ask for child support. We've been doing fine without you all this time. I'll come and sign the papers. I don't need your apartment either. I've already told you a hundred times that I won't take anything from you, I said, but the man didn't seem to believe me. After talking to my ex-husband, I got very nervous and worried. I will leave Esteban with Silvana, but I was afraid to go to court alone. 
I couldn't even work because I could only think about the meeting with my ex-husband. How will it go? Won't he hurt me? Does Diego really want a divorce? Or is he just trying to get to me this way? When a car pulled up in front of the house, I glanced there. Probably it's Silvana. But I was greatly surprised to see Lucas's SUV. Lucas? Hello, I rushed outside. I look terrible again. I probably should have at least looked in the mirror. A man took out of the car flowers and bags full of something. Hello, Irma. I brought you some presents. I had some free time, so I thought I'd come over. I will visit Grandma's grave and then come back to you. In the meantime, you and Esteban can open your presents. I thanked him and took the bags and flowers from his hands. But I couldn't understand why fate was so kind to me. Lucas is a wonderful man and his future wife will be lucky. I'm glad I met him and he gave me a chance to prove myself. He gave me a chance to do what I love and earn a decent salary. And, to be honest, I like him as a man, but I don't think he would look at me as a woman. My son was happy when he pulled a robot transformer out of a bag. It definitely costs a lot of money, and I don't understand why Lucas bought us such expensive gifts. When the man came back from the cemetery, I asked him and he just chuckled. I always reward my best employees. And you are the best, Irma. I made coffee and offered him homemade pastries, and then I showed him the sketch for the new ad campaign. I'm sorry, I thought I would finish it today, but something unpleasant happened, and I couldn't work properly. I will definitely get over my anxiety and finish the work. Irma, don't worry, you work pretty fast, and the results of your work are impressive, no one else can do the same. Lucas hastened to comfort me. Will you play with me? Esteban suddenly asked the man, and I felt embarrassed. I was about to scold my son and ask him not to interfere, but Lucas smiled and nodded back at him. Sure. Why not? Do you mind, Irma? I was okay with that and nodded approvingly, but I no longer understood what was going on. There was a strange throbbing in my temples, and I tried to ignore that sticky feeling of suspicion crawling under my skin. Lately, I was thinking about something bad too often. I guess nothing horrible would happen if my boss played with my son. I felt awkward, but Lucas could have said no if he didn't want to. But after all, it was his idea because he had brought Esteban some new toys, and he agreed to play with him. While Esteban played with Lucas, I cleaned the table and then sat by the window, admiring the flowers and thinking about the divorce. Diego would definitely mock me. I didn't want to see him. If only it were possible to solve everything without having to meet him. What if it's possible? After all, I don't want anything from my ex-husband, and he doesn't want to see his child. Any judge would understand the situation immediately. I was immersed in my thoughts and didn't notice Lucas approaching me. Is everything all right? He asked me. I flinched and looked up at him sadly. Yes, everything is fine. Will you tell me what's bothering you? If you want, you can take the day off. I don't know what made me do it, but I trusted Lucas and told him about my upcoming divorce. I will go with you and protect you from your ex-husband. And don't even try to refuse, Irma. Our advertising agency has reached a new level thanks to you. Don't say no. You help me, and I'll help you. I wanted to say no, but I couldn't. After all, Silvana doesn't ask for anything in return for her help. Perhaps Lucas is helping us without expecting anything in return, too. Thank you. I'll be very grateful, I nodded. Good. You can take a couple of days off and get ready mentally. This project is not urgent. You don't have to work on it right now. You should spend some time with your son. I looked at Lucas gratefully and smiled at him. Maybe God rewarded me for not giving up after leaving my ex-husband. The day X came. Silvana came to pick up Esteban and demanded all the details from me. She wondered why Lucas didn't leave, but decided to stay and support me. But I had no answer. Silvana, there's nothing between us. He's my boss. I answered, finishing my makeup. Oh, really? 
Then why do you look like candy? Why are you wearing your best dress and such attractive makeup? Don't tell me you just want your ex to regret losing you. I know that you don't care about him. My mom always looks like candy. Esteban said seriously, and Silvana blushed, realizing that my son is not stupid and understood everything. Yes, you're right, kiddo, Silvana tried to move the topic. Come on, pack your toys instead of listening to our conversation. Irma, what if? Silvana blinked, looking at me with a sly look. And I chuckled, come on, stop it, girl. Lucas pulled up in front of the house, and I rushed to his car. And Silvana looked out the window as if she wanted to catch us doing something dirty. While we were driving to the courthouse, we were talking about work. But suddenly our conversation smoothly switched to another topic my conflict with Diego. I noticed that Lucas got angry when I told him that my ex-husband used to hit me from time to time. However, the man pretended to be focused on the road. We met Diego outside the courthouse. The ex-husband ran up to me and Lucas and started insulting me, choosing the most disgusting words. Lucas grabbed him by the arm and pulled him aside to talk, and I was afraid that there would be a fight. It would be embarrassing if my boss and my ex-husband would fight because of me. When they returned, Diego was silent, only glancing angrily at us. We signed all the necessary papers, and I walked out of the courthouse with the divorce certificate. It was just a formality, but it made me feel so good and happy. What did you and Diego talk about? I asked Lucas on the way to the car. I just explained what I could do to a man who was abusing a woman and a child. Nothing special. I'm sure he won't bother you again. Thank you, Lucas. You've done so much for me that I don't know how to thank you. I screamed before I finished because my foot got caught in a hole. I twisted my leg. Lucas deftly caught me so I wouldn't fall, and our eyes met. My heart raced, and I reached for the man's lips. I don't know how it happened, but we kissed. And there was so much tenderness and care in that kiss, I've never felt anything like this before. Irma, move to the capital. I'm not pushing you. I'm not asking you to move in with me right away. I'll rent a house for you and Esteban. Everything will be almost the same, but you'll be closer to me. To be honest, the day I pulled up outside your house, it happened because of you. Then it seemed to me that your house was surrounded by light as if the Almighty had shown me the way to you. And then, after I got to know you better, I couldn't sleep and eat. I couldn't stop thinking about you. Will you think about my offer? I'm not sure it would work, because I have a son, I whispered, running my hand down his shirt. I love children, and Esteban seems to like me. We have a warm relationship, and I'm sure I could replace the boy's father if you'd let me. It feels like this kiss broke down all the barriers I've been trying to build between us. Because if you have the same feelings, we can try. After all, if it doesn't work out, I can come back home. I have a good portfolio so I can work as a designer, I chuckled. Lucas got serious. He looked me in the eye and frowned. I guess my joke was inappropriate in this situation. But I wasn't sure it was going to work out between us. Who knows what future is ahead of us and how our relationship might turn out if we give it a chance. When my son and I were packing, Silvana cried. It's hard for me to change something so drastically, too, but my friend and I will always be in touch. I do not doubt that, so my soul was serene. We didn't say goodbye forever. We just parted for a while to meet again. A year later, Lucas and I decided to get married. It wasn't easy to take this step, but I felt my soul had chosen this man. Esteban also bonded with Lucas and began to call him dad from time to time. Also, I got a chance to thank Silvana. I found a good job for her and Francisco in the capital and helped them to move. A new level of life, a different income, they always dreamed of a better life. A year and a half after the wedding, we came to visit Lucas' grandmother as usual. He came every year to clean up the grave and plant new flowers. He loved his grandmother very much, for she was like a mother to him. He said that even after she died, his grandmother helped him in some way. She was the reason we met. Maybe that was true because I had long doubted if I should buy the house. 
but despite the overall devastation, I felt calm and comfortable. We brought the villagers some presents, treated them with goodies, cleaned the grave, and checked on the house. I wish someone would live there permanently, but we always stay in this house when we come to this village, so we're in no hurry to sell it. When we drove to the city to go to a cafe, we met Diego. Esteban and Lucas went into the store to get some vintage toy cars, and I decided to stay outside because I needed some fresh air. But I have regretted it right after I saw my ex-husband. What a meeting. Look at you, what a bimbo you've become. I was right when I said Esteban wasn't my son. You cheated on me with that bastard, right? The drunken ex yelled, and I stared at him in confusion. I understand that life has worn Diego, his belly was fat, there were dark circles under his eyes, and he was more like a drunken bum, as they show them in the movies. Perhaps his family life has not worked out. Maybe his new wife took everything out of him to the last penny and left him. But that's none of my business. Don't touch me. I removed the hand of the ex, who grabbed my elbow. Is it painful to hear the truth? You cheated on me, got pregnant by another man, and now you pretend to be innocent? The man growled, but in the next second, he moved away from me, because Lucas and Esteban came out from behind me. If you touch my mother again, Lucas will knock your teeth out. I warned you. My son said. Diego didn't argue. He thought I was alone, but when he saw Lucas, he got scared and ran away. Are you okay? Did he hurt you? Lucas asked. No, I'm fine. It was bad luck that we met him. I lowered my eyes in frustration. The day was ruined. I got nervous, and I realized that I didn't have the energy or the desire to go to the cafe. It would be better if we ordered food and ate in the room. I had a headache and my legs felt heavy, so I asked my husband to go to the hotel. Irma, you wanted to tell us something important at the cafe, didn't you? The man frowned. I mean, that's why we came here. Yes, I got the results of the test, Lucas. I was silent for a moment, catching my breath. We're having another baby. Yay! Esteban jumped up and down. I will always protect my little brother or sister. Lucas took me in his arms and spun me around, forgetting about the unpleasant meeting with my ex-husband. After all, the most important thing is that once I made the right choice and stopped waiting for good fortune and enduring the humiliation and insults of my ex. It is important to always listen to your heart because it will never lie. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.